There's nothing really more boring than talking about a boost pump, but yet it's a very important part of the systems in these fuel-injected airplanes. Every now and then I'll have somebody come, come uh, pick up their airplane that's got nothing but carburetor experience, and you know they think pumping the throttle will shoot some gas to the engine to prime it, and of course it won't do it. We rely totally on the boost pump for, for a number of things. The boost pump, under normal circumstances, is really primarily used for three things. The first is priming the engine on start. The second is as a backup, safety backup, in case we lose the engine-driven fuel pump. And the last one is to cool the engine in a climb if the engine temperatures are starting to get a little bit on the hot side. So we have got a manual boost pump switch here. The middle position is off, up is high, down is low, and the middle's off. Now, we just had a customer here pick up their airplane, and I think they've, they've flown a Cirrus quite a bit, and they run the boost pumps on low for takeoff and landing. We do not. This is like, like a typical Cessna, in that the boost pump is only used, number one, for priming. And now when we prime the engine, there's a couple things to remember. Number one, obviously, the mixture needs to be in to get any fuel to the engine for priming. And the amount of prime we give an engine is dependent on really two things. One, the time the boost pump's on, the, the length of time. The other is the position of the throttle. And to give you an idea, we could have the throttle all the way back, turn the boost pump on for, say, high boost for, say, three seconds, and with the throttle all the way back, in that three seconds, that boost pump is going to meter about three and a half gallons an hour of prime to the engine. If we push the throttle all the way in, in that same three seconds, that boost pump, because the throttle's all the way in, is going to meter about 25 gallons an hour to the engine, almost seven times more fuel. So consequently, a guy always has to remember that the amount of fuel metered to the engine when you're priming it on start is directly related to the throttle position. So this is the primary use of the pump. Now, we also use it in case of an emergency backup. Obviously, the engine has an engine-driven fuel pump that kind of senses, the, senses engine RPM and meters the fuel accordingly. If that should fail, and I've never seen one fail, but if it should fail, then we use the electric boost pump as a backup safety measure. Now, here again, we've got two positions on the switch that we use, high boost, low boost. If we lose the engine-driven boost pump, say we're at 7,000 feet wide open throttle cruising and we lose the engine-driven pump, at a high power setting, I associate that with a high position on the boost pump switch because we're going to be pumping out 24 gallons an hour. So you turn it to high boost, you readjust the mixture because the electric boost pump will not sense engine RPM like the engine-driven pump does. It just squirts out a flat 25 gallons an hour. So consequently, when you turn the, the electric boost pump on, you've got to readjust the mixture. Now in descent, when you throttle back and in the pattern, and you don't have so much power, as you throttle back to a lower power setting, you in turn turn the boost pump down to a low boost position. Now, the thing that differentiates high from low is on the high boost, the aircraft electrical voltage just goes straight to the pump. On the low position, it goes through two resistors, kicks down the voltage, kicks down the pump output. So consequently, remember, the high boost kind of relates to high power in a pump failure. Low boost relates to low power. You'll have to manually readjust the mixture on both. It's a good safety backup. And if I lost the engine-driven pump in flight, turned, to, turned the electric boost pump on, you know, I'd feel safe enough to fly to the nearest facility that has maintenance and land it. You know, I wouldn't complete the trip, obviously, but I, I certainly wouldn't just drop it in the first field I came to in an emergency. So the boost pump certified for continuous operation should get you to the destination. The other thing we use it for, and it's approved for, is in a climb. If the engine, if the engine's hot, say you, you land at a big airport, you taxi in, you shut down, you start back up, you know, you, you call clearance ground. By the time you get back to ready to take off, the engine is, is cylinders are probably 320, 30, 40 degrees. Well, you almost guaranteed that when you add full power, you get lots of heat, lots of power, no airspeed, those temperatures are going to go up. Usually I've found at like three or four hundred feet, five, you know, we start getting higher temperatures and these would be temperatures above 390, clo close to maybe 400 degrees. It's okay to turn the boost pump to high boost momentarily, it squirts a lot more gas to the engine, instantly the EGTs will drop and the CHTs will follow. And usually at two or three minutes on high boost is sufficient to get the temperatures in the mid to high 390 range back down to 380 or a little below, and then I just shut the boost pump off because at that time I've got enough forward airspeed that the air, airflow kind of takes over the cooling duties. 
it, it's not the best way to cool an engine, but it's a good way because obviously when you're taking off in a climb, cow flaps are wide open, so that's not really an option for you to cool the engine. The only other real option is to lower the nose and get more airspeed and give up the climb. So once the boost pumps on, and I flip it on high boost, you'll feel a slight loss of power from an overly rich mixture. Everything else is fine and allows you to go ahead and cool that engine without giving up the climb. Take care.